this is my podcast, Breaking the Box. And it's a slightly left of centre, left field view of media, TV, newspapers, the news, things that have been going on in that space this week. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I'll be interested to see how it does. And here's episode one. Well, this is a bit unusual. It's a podcast on YouTube, normally known for its visuals. And this is all going to be sound only. Although, of course, there are visuals that go with it. In fact, there's a lot of visuals that go with it. I can even talk to this camera. Um, But it's a little bit more live and hopefully a little bit more relaxed. So this episode is called I'm a Lefty. And there's lots of reasons for that. Yes, my politics, with no apology, are left of centre. I'm not a left-handed person, I'm a right-handed person, but I am slightly a divergent thinker. So the ideas that I come up with are often a little bit left field. And the reason for that, I think, is probably because I've got a brain that's wired slightly differently. I'm dyslexic. I have a thing called Erlen syndrome. And it's only recently that I've been able to actually since the advent of computers and spell check, which is sometimes helpful, to put pen to paper. One of the reasons that I wanted to do this uh, podcast is because I find making videos, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to things like this, and making videos is something that I find quite difficult. I'm not a natural presenter. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy being on camera, but I do enjoy debate and I enjoy discussion and I enjoy sharing my knowledge of the media industry and the television industry with other people. I do a lot of public speaking and I do a lot of lecturing. And this is how I do it. It's a much more relaxed way of speaking to people than actually making a video where I kind of suddenly feel the need to present and to say what I've got to say succinctly and to say it quickly and to say it clearly. And that's where the problems come because it takes me quite a few takes to get that that, that vision of clear, quick uh, information over. And, uh, and I can see the mistakes that I make and I have to rectify them. So it's quite a few takes. Whereas this is meant to be slightly more relaxed. So relaxed that I can use different camera angles and even cut to them live without having to edit them all together. And really some of the inspiration for that came from Radio 4. And I love listening to Radio 4 in the, in the, in the car. And I just want to share with you some of the stuff that I enjoy about Radio 4. One thing in particular. So normally when I'm driving now to Farnham, I lecture at Farnham, I, I'm listening to the Today programme, which is, of course, the news. And the Today programme is brilliant. It gives you such a, a wide perspective because it's not like television news where it's on a kind of 15-minute cycle. Although today the actual news segments, which are on the quarter hours, is a little bit... Um, repetitive, but they have interesting kind of editorial that that runs through it, an editorial that you don't always see um, or hear on on, on television. But then it really does get kind of interesting because just after that, there's a a series of uh, nine o'clock programs. They're, They're different each day of the week. And the New Gurus, which is one you can see here, is did Steve Jobs' quest for enlightenment create the modern guru? Uh, Helen Lewis investigates. These are such interesting programmes and give you such uh, a, a wide view of what's going on in the world and the ability to talk about them, discussion points for the day, particularly if you are dealing with a lot of students. You know, I often quote Radio 4 and they all look slightly skyward thinking, oh, you know, isn't Radio 4 for old buffers. Well, I would say it definitely isn't and that I would recommend other people listening to it because it gives you a wide perspective on life. Um, The other programme that I really enjoy, this is when I'm coming home, is uh, the PM programme and that's down here uh, with Ewan and it's, it's a great show and again it's the evening version of today but slightly more in retrospect in that it's talking about the the news of the day and the things that have happened during the day uh, but it's it's another great program and then my other absolute favorite is in our time presented by melvin bragg melvin who 
is just a tour de force intellectually and in, in his kind of thinking. But he also has that wonderful touch of being able to make things that seem unbelievably highbrow um, appeal to such a wide audience. I used to love him on the South Bank show, which was recorded at LWT. Um, uh, that was his base. And I never worked with Melvin. Um, I've met him a couple of times, but he didn't know me. And yet, he always acknowledged me in the in the lift with a sort of a nod and I think that's probably because I always used to kind of look at him in a slightly starstruck way because I admired him as a broadcaster so much but Melvin hosts In Our Time which is just uh, such a collection of brilliant programs where he gets two or three maybe four experts to talk on one very specific subject and they all sound so dry but when you actually listen to it, it does give you such a wonderful insight into what is in our time. And culturally, it doesn't just deal with, it's very British centric, but it looks at uh, the outside influences through, um, uh, 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 from a kind of British perspective. But, you know, look at some of these titles. Um, Melvin Bragg and guests discuss Virginia Woolf's essay on women and literature. That's one essay. That was fascinating. Mercantilism, that's about economics, um, an idea which kind of dominated and to some extent still dominates European economies um, for the last 300 years. The Ramayana, which is a, a very famous poem and uh, written in Sanskrit, that, 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 that was, again, brilliantly interesting. And then here we have, look at this, a programme on megaliths. Melvin Bragg and guests discuss what we know about ancient stones placed in the landscape. You couldn't ask for a broader, wider range of subjects, but every single one is really, really fascinating. It could be about a thing, a people, a subject, a poem. And as I say, I, I suspect the rather highbrow nature of the titles puts a lot of people off but please don't be you know dip in and just listen to these wonderful people discussing um these these various subjects it, it, it's really quite a joy uh nine o'clock that's on on a wednesday i think uh, but you'd have to check the schedule i'm not quite sure and let's go back to this which is my facebook page as you can see there i call myself a TV format and creative consultant. Uh, I do have the great fortune to be able to travel all over the world consulting with various broadcasters uh, on television programmes and various other aspects of broadcasting and creating shows. I've got a couple of shows on the go at the moment, um, one of which we're very hopeful for for a, a local release uh, or a local format here in the UK and in America. Uh, uh, which I did in Singapore in the middle of last year. Sadly, badly affected by COVID. That was when I got my bad part of COVID. But as a dyslexic, Facebook gives me a great opportunity to kind of do what I couldn't do as a kid, which is express myself through writing. And I quite like doing that. It, it is littered with mistakes, mistakes and grammatical errors. And, you know, I can't see the words on the page properly. So there's a lot of uh, misspellings uh, or, or rather predicted spellings that aren't quite as I predicted them <laughs> uh, but there we go but I can post about all sorts of things you know here we're talking about the James Webb telescope which uh, this fantastic photo shows the bending of light there's a super massive object here which you can't see but what it's doing is bending the light around it from these distant gal uh, galaxies these distant galaxies are from the very beginning of time 13 billion years ago and as they come around this super massive object if you imagine a, a bowling ball placed on a mattress the light actually bends around it as you would get the curvature uh, in the mattress and that creates these weird and wonderful kind of bent shapes of these galaxies here. But it also throws up all sorts of theoretical physics about the bending and collapsing of time. You know, if this was to completely collapse in on itself or fold in on itself, you get the ability to create wormholes. And if you go into a wormhole, you can jump from one part of space to another in an instant. Um, there's also uh, theories about time travel within the space-time continuum. And what happens within that because yeah it's true to say that from 13 billion light years away 
this light is very old and when it bends round a super massive object it doesn't travel in a linear way so time slows down well can you reverse time can you speed time up can you do all of these things and it's all part of theoretical physics and i did physics at university not for long but um, i did do physics at university and then I also get a chance to talk about various political things. So this is where the kind of left-wing politics come into it. One of the things, I'm also a governor at a local school. So there's lots of posts here about the recent um, claims that child abuse is uh, from uh, racial groupings or certain racial groupings, which a Home Office report actually debunked in 2020. Um, so the government does need to kind of get its act together and publish the figures if it does have figures. That 2020 report generated an idea that um, any uh, racial abuse or, or any abuse should be uh, the race of the people, the perpetrators, the groomers should also be recorded. But I think we can all agree that the majority of grooming happens online and that being online as a young person is somewhere that you need to be very aware, particularly with those awful teenage filters. I, I wrote to my MP about those. I think they should be banned completely where somebody um, of an older age can actually appear as a teenager is really putting tools into the hands of would be groomers and paedophiles that shouldn't be there, shouldn't be allowed. And then my absolute, amusement i suppose is one way of anthony brown is my local south cambridge mp but these may have dropped through your doorstep anywhere in the country it's just a template you just change the photo but this is for the tory party this is a local election um promotion for the tory party why uh central government mps feel the need to uh, bang the drum in local elections when it's nothing to do with them we've actually got uh, a liberal controlled council where we are but apparently anthony has made a huge difference uh, to my life uh, delivering millions of pounds of improved roads well that hurts um because i ran over a pothole only the other day a massive pothole and resulted in me needing a new, needing a new wheel for 200 quid so thanks very much for that improvement mr tory party uh, protecting our waterways well we all know that millions of gallons of sewage has been dumped in our waterways because the government has seen fit to tender out all our water services to profit centered companies who put profits over the environment and just because we get a bit of rainfall and the sewage plants can't cope rather than building bigger sewage plants they just open up the sluice gate and pour raw sewage into the rivers thanks again for that anthony and fighting for the transport solutions we really need well you should try getting a bus locally from where i live in cambridge into the center of cambridge i think it's about twice a day um not very good at all but then Nationally, all I've got to say to you, Anthony, is HS2. And if you think that's an improvement, I don't know what planet you come from. However, look at this. It's green. Not a bit of Tory blue on it anywhere and not a mention of the Tory party. So one can only assume that Anthony, who is a member of the Tory party, is so ashamed of his own party and his own branding and realises that a lot of people receiving a blue party political pamphlet on their doorstep will put it straight in the bin that by not mentioning the Tory party and by using green as a colour is going to stop people doing that. Well, Anthony, let's hope not. Oh, oh gosh. Don't know that. No. See, even Alexa's joining in. Anyway, that is my Facebook page. Do have a look at it if you want to. Now, let's get on to some entertainment stuff. Eurovision is coming up round the corner. A little bit disappointed, um, am I? Because... Uh, I did write to Eurovision and say it would be lovely, I, although obviously the Ukraine should be hosting it and it should be recorded in the cr Ukraine. I think it's great that Britain has taken on some of the cost and is hosting it over here. But it would have been lovely, I think, in my opinion, if we had almost uh, uh, as many Ukrainian television professionals working on it as possible. And I realise there's a slight naivety in that because a lot of the... Uh, men and women are fighting but I'm sure uh, there are people who still feel it's passionate to get the message out and to have a voice globally that they still are running their tv stations and indeed the competition to find the Eurovision song in Ukraine was run from a metro station in Kiev underneath the you know almost while the bombs were falling so 
But it's not. It, it's crewed up by British people. Many of my friends are there crewing it up. But this is one of the things that has happened. Another slight political idea. This is from the lovely GB News, Britain's news channel. Not my news channel, gentlemen and ladies. But the BBC is a disgrace for choosing a foul-mouthed Britain-hating fanatic to representing the UK at Eurovision, says Darren Grimes. Interesting. You know, this young woman is a person with a political opinion. And I have to say, like many musicians, many people involved in the arts, not all, of course not all, but many people, she does see a Labour point of view. Let me just put her on. I'm looking at this uh, uh, page at the moment. This is the GB News website. And there is a picture of May Muller who is going to be representing and has been chosen to represent Great Britain. And GB News are up in arms about this because she is a Labour supporter. She has said some fairly silly things about Boris Johnson. Nobody wanted him to be ill um, with COVID, but she's very critical of the Tory government. And like a lot of people involved in the art, she's critical. And like a lot of musicians, she's also very upset about Brexit because it means that touring in Europe is almost impossible for British musicians now. It's just too expensive. Uh, getting the gear over used to be almost be, be done, you know, carnets and things like that. I know, don't we all know about carnets in our business? All the serial numbers of every single piece of equipment, they're a nightmare to do. Didn't need them while we were in Brexit. We need them again now. We're back in Brexit, or we will do very soon. And it, 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 it's the bottom has fallen out of the touring market in, in Europe. And that was a major source of revenue for many musicians who don't naturally go to America. So here we go, calling her out as uh, a mad, loony left person and uh, saying that she's Britain hating. Uh, I think when she was at school, she made a comment about how she hated Britain because of school dinners or uniforms or something. I don't know, but I wouldn't think she's particularly Britain ha hating. And they're now calling her out and saying, how can the BBC choose somebody like this? Well, it would be pretty hard to find a musician that didn't have a view on a poor view of the Tory government. And not only that, it's not why people are chosen. She's chosen because she's written a song. She was chosen by a professional panel and they like her song. They think it's got the best chance and that's why they chose her. Her political viewpoint is neither here nor there. Does it mean that Stormzy, you know, we shouldn't buy Stormzy's record or Stormzy shouldn't call himself British because he's rather critical of the British government? Um, should we ban Glastonbury because most of the artists and the headliners there are on the left of centre and they make that quite plain in all their literature. So it's rather naive of GB News to say that anybody with a, and, and very wrong of GB News to say that people with political opinions shouldn't be um, chosen on merit for their musical ability. And this young woman has been chosen on merit because of her music ability. She wrote the song that she's singing. She's clearly very, very talented. And I, for one, wish her well. Anyway, let's have a look. What next? So we've done Radio 4. I just want to talk a little bit about what I've been watching recently on Netflix. And here we go. This is the Netflix website. I haven't watched Copycat Killer. But what I have been watching is this, A Quiet Place. And very good it was too. This is A Quiet Place 2, starring Emily Blunt. Um, wonderful kind of premise in that these aliens have landed and they're blind but are super sensitive to sound. So the whole world has to fall silent. Otherwise, they find you and kill you. And obviously, if you've got young babies and young kids... It's very difficult. So it's a post-apocalyptic drama. One of the, it's, it's a good one. I enjoyed it. Emily Blunt's performance is great. And it's got the guy out of Peaky Blinders, Kieran, uh, playing a lead role in this particular one. He wasn't in the first episode. This is a sequel. And on screen there, you can see this is a flashback to the very first show. That's how it starts to show how the aliens landed. Um, 
I also started watching uh, Waco, which is the very famous uh, standoff between the FBI and a religious cult in America. Kind of fascinating, but I, I have to say, this isn't a complete catch-all. There's a lot I love about American television, but this is a little bit drawn out um, in terms of just how long it's last. You know, I think there are three episodes. They're all about 45 minutes long, and... I'm not sure there was that much to say about something that, for those of us that were alive at the time, we, we, we know about. There's also this very interesting new limited series called War Sailor about uh, a couple of Norwegians caught at sea when the Second World War came out. I've not seen it, don't know much about it, but I'm really looking forward to looking at that. So that's on there. Uh, I do enjoy Netflix and I watch quite a lot of Netflix. Um, there are other channels to watch as well. Um, one of the things obviously that everybody's enjoyed just recently is the show The Last of Us. The Last of Us coming from the Sony PlayStation game. And again, it's another post-apocalyptic uh, drama and it's a zombie genre piece. And I'm not always and never have been a sort of fan of the zombie genre. I'm no expert or guru on zombie dramas. There are lots of people that love them. But the thing that's so wonderful about The Last of Us, and I'm going to do a proper review of this uh, on, my, on my channel, but the thing that's so great about it is the, the fact there's not many zombies in it. You know, it, it's basically a love story. It's about the human condition and looks at how people react and how people react to younger people. You know, this is a, the, uh, the core relationship is a man and a young girl. And the young girl isn't his daughter, but he's a young girl that he is forced to protect um, because she holds the answer to this awful bacteria that's going around because she's immune and he has to get her to a facility to exploit that immunity to save the world basically and so it's a quest almost uh, as he takes this precious package um, across country to where she can help the rest of the world and then of course there's an issue once he gets to the facility which I won't go into because it will slightly spoil the ending for you but you know, as I say, it is a love story and it's about the, not, not a love story, not a romantic love story, but about human beings who love each other. And I think it's, it's fascinating and very clever for the fact that there are not many zombies in it. They're there and they are ever there and ever threatening. And that's what gives you the tension. But it's about the, the relationship. And then, of course, there's episode three, which is about a gay relationship between two men who play a role in these people's lives but the entire episode is about their life from um, their first meeting to their relationship ending in the circumstances that it does and again it's another unbelievably brave piece of television and piece of writing and it's also a brave piece of construction in that it happens in episode three in the series kind of before the actual main storyline between the man and the young woman uh, has has really reached a comfortable point. So it's kind of disruptive. But also, it also leaves you with that thought of, well, I wonder what's happened to the other two while this has been going on. So you do tune in next week. There has been a little bit of criticism. One of my Facebook friends, Philip Bloom in particular, uh, he's a director of photography. Philip was critical of it, saying that it did lack tension. And I have to say, if I'm honest... I do love The Walking Dead and have watched it and kind of lament the fact that it has now finished after its, what was it, 11th series? I, I can't remember now. But I think The Walking Dead, which is also brilliant writing, but with more zombies and slightly more gore, but it, it does have the tension that maybe The Last of Us uh, lacks a little bit. But nonetheless... If you, if, if you feel like commenting, there will be uh, a chat down below. And as I say, I love a debate. Or go onto my Facebook page and I'll put the Facebook page details up here somewhere so that you can have a chat with me there. Always happy to have a chat. And here I am now on the Amazon Prime website. Uh, Avatar The Way of Water, which I, I've seen. 
uh, is now available to buy on Amazon Prime. I really enjoyed the the movie. Uh, my daughter, my 18-year-old daughter, took me to see it, which is great. Um, but this is... Uh, 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 it, it's good. Yes, some of it goes on a little bit long. Rabbit Hole is something that I'm really interested to see. That's on Paramount+. Plus, um, So you have to subscribe to that. Swarm is another... Uh, horror thing which I'll have a look at uh, the class of 07 I don't know much about that um, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about La Bria is something that I started watching and if I'm honest it's about people that fall through a hole into uh, prehistoric Los Angeles it, it was funny when it first started I don't think it's meant to be but I, I've kind of fallen out of watching it now which kind of says everything that there is to say about it the rig do have i'll put a link somewhere uh, to that do have a look at my review uh, about the rig it was probably scathing uh, i would say um yes i wouldn't recommend that everything everywhere all at once clearly fated by uh, the academy in los angeles if i'm honest I have to say why. I keep trying to watch it and I can't get past the first 20 minutes. So I, I will have to really concentrate and do my best to, to watch that. And top 10 in the UK. Now, this is interesting. The Power. Uh, first three episodes are up on uh, Amazon at the moment. And it, it's very interesting. I would say uh, it's got lots of metaphors. But basically, young women are... And I'm on the Prime website now looking at the, the promo. Young women develop an organ uh, around about their uh, chest um, on the collarbone and it generates electricity. And suddenly they have this power to not just put right in a somewhat violent way the wrongs of how men treat women, but also they can then dominate. And so it, 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 it's interesting. A little bit slow to start, but um, I, I've enjoyed it so far. The Power, that's called. Uh, one episode drops a week. Clarkson Farm 2, whatever you think of Jeremy, it's well worth a watch. That, If only because of the absurdity of planning laws in our country, in, in Britain. Picard, uh, it's a shame because... I, I loved Picard 1 and 2. Um, it's sort of science fiction for grown-ups. I think Star Trek is 2, the original. But um, it, it sort of lost a little bit of its... You know, one of the great appealing things about Star Trek was it, its kind of retro feel and things like the Tribbles. And who remembers the Tribbles? Uh, Picard has got a little bit more serious. And it, it, some of it just sort of doesn't fit terribly easy to, for me it, it's a little bit too profound i suppose in the way that it, it it it's portrayed and then finally i just want to talk about all four so here we are on the all four website taskmaster is back and i just love taskmaster i just think it's absolutely top-notch wacky tv um, surreal comedy and suits my left brain thinking very well thank you very much rise and fall is very every inch the poor persons i don't know why we have that expression it's a uh, doesn't hold a candle to traitors which it is slightly imitating but it's basically a power struggle reality show um, where there's a, a controlling group who get the minions and manage the minions uh, in the basement to do their bidding. And then, of course, Married at First Sight. This particular season, this is the Australian version, way better than the British version, is back and is compulsory viewing and compulsive viewing. It's fantastic. You can't believe the characters. Um, and yay, go Jesse and Claire because I do want them to succeed. But do, do have a look at Married at First Sight. It's a real insight into the way people's minds work, the way their relationships work, and the way they behave when they're in a relationship. But the one thing that I did want to highlight that is on Channel 4 at the moment, Saturdays, uh, I think all the episodes have now dropped. Fortress Britain with Alice Roberts. We love Alice. 
Um, she's one of those wonderful people, uh, an eminent professor of uh, archaeology, but anatomical archaeology or biological archaeology, um, where she looks at bones mainly and looks at the way people's lives um, were and the way they lived through their skeletons. Um, but she's great because she's another one of those brilliant teachers that is able to bring subjects to life and in an entertaining way. And she's fantastic. This is every inch another Alice Roberts styled program. They all come from the same production company. Lots of shots of her walking around with big letters. Uh, I'm on the Channel 4 website at the moment. And lots of uh, shots of her walking about in the British landscape. But her base, uh, which is another familiar technique they use, is at this wonderful cast castle on the south coast. But the subject matter is very interesting because we've got episode one is about Henry VIII, which I found fascinating and his story uh, of the Catholic Church and his castles, his spy network and how he slightly had to turn Britain into a fortress because of his war uh, of words mainly with the Catholic Church. One of the things that was absolutely brilliant was there was a big gathering of the French and the British on the south coast, Field of Gold I think it was called or something like that, but they had jousting competitions and they've got the actual scorecard from the jousting with the kind of little pencil ticks of who won each match, just, just brilliant, and whether their, their, their jousting spears were broken or not. Fascinating wonderful from uh, 500, 600 years ago. Then we get into modern history, which is interesting for, our, uh, for her. Um, oh, just gone on to the wrong part of the website now. But episode two is about Hitler. Getting true curves from Amazon Thank you, Amazon. Um, it's, it, Amazon's telling me how to listen to podcasts behind me now. I must remember to turn it off when I'm next doing one of these. But here we are. Let's have a look at this. This is very good. OK, uh, episode two is called Halting Hitler, and it's about how Britain planned for the Nazi invasion and what a terribly frightening time it was after the tragedy of Dunkirk and what could have happened in this country. Episode three and four were kind of slightly the wrong way around for me, and I don't know if that's just uh, a fault with the player or... or they got transmitted in the other way, but it doesn't really matter. The Norman takeover. You know, there's so much that we should know about the Norman takeover because it did shape modern Britain and so much that we probably don't know. And as they point out at the beginning of the episode, the, the Norman history of the country is kind of like precede into uh, a, a, a compact. Oh, and then the Normans came and they built castles and churches and we don't get into the detail of it. But the detail is amazing, particularly if you live where I do, near Ely, which was one of the last strongholds of um, the resistance against the, the Normans and how that was uh, played out. F fascinating stuff. And then episode three, which for me was because of current events around the world, one of the most interesting was Avoiding Armageddon and its tales of the Cold War. And the other fascinating thing in you know in the middle of Thetford Forest was the first storage facility for polonium uh, and and the bombs the bombs were stored in three separate components so the explosives the airplanes and the polonium which created the reaction um, were all stored in different locations and they would have to come together to kind of make the bomb or to fit the bomb together and then send it off and you know it's been going on for years the the madness of uh, uh, of government in that when they first built the first nuclear bombs which were huge we didn't have an airplane to fly them so they just sat there i think basically for three years before the bombs got smaller and the planes got bigger and then we could actually fly them with the v-force uh, and things like the vulcan bomber but for three years these bombs just sat there unusable you know, working, but unusable. Brilliant stuff. Episode three of Fortress Britain um, featuring Alex Roberts. And that's it, really, for this very first podcast. Um, I hope you've found it interesting. Uh, it's going to be something that I really work on. I shall have a look at my YouTube analytics and see where everybody got bored and see 
what people are interested in looking at. And, and I'll also be interested to know if it's actually recorded because I've been going on for longer than I have done usually and whether the audio's got out of sync with the pictures and how much work it's going to take me before I can put it up. But that is Breaking the Box, uh, my first YouTube podcast. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and episode two will be up next week.